Hey everybody, my name is Spencer Meeks. I am a 4-H'er here in Smith County, Tennessee, and I want to share with you a little bit about one of the skills that I've learned during my time in 4-H. Uh, last fall, me and a group of friends had the opportunity to compete in the Tennessee 4-H Forestry Judging Competition. This was one of our all-time favorite competitions, and we really, really enjoyed the skills that we were able to pick up. We got to compete at both a regional and a state level, and we're actually able to place fourth in the state of Tennessee at the state competition. It was a great experience and we all enjoyed the effort that we put in and the reward that came out of that. One of the skills that we picked up as part of our training was wood identification. As part of the contest, we are given a possibility of 16 species of wood that are common to the Eastern United States with the task of identifying them based only on a two by four by four inch ish block of wood. No leaves or any other clues as to what the wood might be. So what I want to do today is introduce you to a few of the basics of wood identification, some of the tools you'll need, some of the characteristics to look for, and then some of the common features of some easily recognizable trees here in the Eastern United States. We'll start with the tools that you need. Uh, so they're really quite simple. You need wood samples of some sort. Small blocks that, like I said, are around maybe an inch by four inches by four inches are a good place to start. You will need a knife of some sort, a sharp knife or a razor blade, utility knife maybe, so that you can cut a smooth cut into the end of the block of wood into the grain structure, which I'll show in a moment and one very neat little tool, a hand lens, or just a, which is basically a pocket-sized magnifying glass. And this gives you the opportunity to really zoom in on the, the grain structure and on the pore structure of the wood. And that's how we do most of our identifying. The recommended power is a 10 by magnification. This is a 12 by magnification, which will be just a little bit more powerful and that's one of the main tools that we'll use while we're identifying wood. Now there are some common characteristics to look for. Some of them are simple. I definitely won't go into all of them because the science of wood identification can get very complicated, especially when you get to woods like black gum or some of the maples that really have no uh, differentiating characteristics. But some of the things that are easy to look for are of course color. Something like red cedar is very easily recognizable based on its color and even its smell. Walnut, of course, has the very nice walnut brown, a chocolate brown color. And something like cherry is very it's favored because of its red color. It makes it very nice for woodworking and for furniture projects. On a more technical aspect, we get into the, gray, the grain structure and the pore structure of the wood. So when I mentioned the grain end of the wood earlier, what I mean is the wood where you're looking at a cross section of all of the rings and rays and pores of the wood. That's how we do most of our identifying past some of these more easily identifiable woods. Uh, within that, we have things such as parenchyma and rays, which I can explain a little bit later, that make uh, differentiating between woods even easier on a small scale. So, now I can tell you a few of the more easily recognizable characteristics of some of these common woods uh, that you'll find pretty easily here in the eastern United States. We can start with this specimen of red cedar course, living, we live near Lebanon, Tennessee. Lebanon is named for the cedars of Lebanon, which is a country over in the Middle East, and we have cedars all over the place. So that's always an easy wood to find, and it's always easy to identify. The trees are easy to see. The red color and the distinctive cedar smell or make it very easy. It's a very lightweight wood. Then we have our southern yellow pine 
This is a very common building material. Chances are the house that you're sitting in right now is framed out of a southern yellow pine. It's very easy because of its yellowish white color and the darker brown orange growth rings, the more compact growth rings. Something that I will note about our groupings of wood here is I have two examples of soft woods and four examples of hard woods. The difference between the two is that soft woods have structures that are called pitch pockets. They are, they are, I don't know how well the camera will show it, but they do have these small darkly colored circles that hold the pitch or the sap. Especially if anybody has ever worked with some freshly cut pine, you will know how sticky that stuff can be. Hardwoods, on the other hand, have what are called pores, which are actually just small holes in the structure of the wood that allow the wood to breathe and exchange uh, nutrients and liquids and things like that. So that is the way to identify between softwoods and hardwoods is either the poor structure or the lack thereof in the softwoods. So now that we are past softwood identification, we can get into these four pretty easy specimens of hardwood. We will start with our state tree, the yellow poplar. It's easily recognizable right off because of its greenish color. On this side, you can see the difference between the whitish wood and this really distinctive yellow-green color. On a poor scale, it is not very distinctive. So if you have a hand lens and you're trying to identify it, it is not going to stand out a lot but it is an easy one to see because of that yellowish color. Walnut, on the other hand, is distinctive in both color and its pore structure. Like I said earlier, it has that very nice chocolate brown color. A lot of people love it for woodworking and for furniture making, but it also has a very distinctive pore structure. As you can see, whenever you pick up a block of walnut, you will see that it has a whole lot of little holes all through it. I'll see if we can get a shot of that, this cut in the end grain. That has a lot of little pores that are very easy to see, even with the naked eye. This is not something that you have to have a hand lens to be able to identify. So those two are easy based on their color, and in the case of walnut, the pore structure. And then for the last two specimens, we have two woods that are actually similarly colored. We have some cherry and some red oak. They both have a palish red pink color, but where they are different is a number of aspects. First of all, the weight. Cherry is a medium dense wood. Uh, it's rather lightweight, not very tough, as you can see by some of the scrapes and nicks in this, whereas red oak is a very tough, very dense wood. So even though this block is slightly smaller, it is much heavier than the cherry. And then you can also look at the pore structure and the structure of the rings. Right offhand, without a hand lens, there is not a lot to differentiate cherry between a lot of other woods. It's a very tight grain structure, not a lot of pores, so it's a very smooth looking wood on the end grain. Red oak, on the other hand, is very, very recognizable from the end grain. You can see within the growth rings here, we have two distinct types of ring. We have these darker colored wide bands, and then within these lighter colored bands, we have collections of pores that are surrounded by structures called parenchyma. All of these hardwoods have pores that are surrounded by parenchyma, but they're usually not very easy to see. But the way that these parenchyma in red oak are called banded parenchyma, they band together to form these easily recognizable rings, makes them very easy to see. And that's one way to set out red oak between, but from others. One other noticeable aspect will be what's called rays, which are these lightly colored lines that run perpendicular to the growth rings. Most woods do not have very recognizable rays. 
cherry is not very easy to see. It is does have uh, darker rays than others. Of course, soft woods will not have rays at all. So the sunburst effect of the rays of red oak make it something that is very easy to recognize right offhand. So I thank you for your time. I hope that you enjoyed the video, that you learned something from it. I know that this is a process that me and my forestry judging teammates all enjoyed. And hopefully we've helped you so that you can take this information and maybe go identify some wood for yourself. So once again, thanks for watching. Stay safe and keep learning by doing.